Yes, before we get into business matters, um, I'm going to say hello and welcome to everyone to this um, Birmingham Raw by Nutcracker event. Uh, my name is Tom. I'm the creative digital producer and former dancer with the company. Um, and it's a real pleasure to be joined tonight by the designer of Nutcracker, John McFarlane, who, in a bizarre twist of fate, is in Elaine's office in Birmingham. And I'm joined by Elaine Garlick, who's, um, who office John is using right now. Elaine Garlick is our head of costume at Birmingham Royal Ballet. Um, and we're here to talk about Nutcracker this year. Why is Nutcracker special this year? It's extra special this year because after 32 years, um, mm -hmm. it's had a huge facelift. I think um, having danced in 18 of those 30 years, I think it's fair to say that it still had the magic but it probably lost a little bit of the sparkle to the production, um, despite the best efforts of our amazing technical team. Um, and this year, as I say, it's been rebuilt for our stage with new costumes and sets and slightly different designs, which we're going to get into now. Um, so, John, I'm going to start with you. I think after this length of time, how has it been returning to the production? And uh, I guess sort of... What's your, I guess it's a time to reflect over 30 years and, and how has it been for you, the process of revisiting the Nutcracker? Um, well, of course, it's a time war to, to go back and remember the, the first days of making it um, and the first time it went on stage. I think then it was the grandest thing the company had ever attempted, certainly in scene changes. Um, and now, of course, since then, the company has changed so much and they do things every bit as big. But it's, it's great to be able to go back and realise there's actually very little you want to change. And you go into this project thinking all the things you're going to do differently. And then when you start on it, you realise why you did things the way you did them. But having said that, there are things that I wasn't happy with, there always are with new productions. And the lovely thing about revisiting Nutcracker is that I can rectify these things and rebuild things that, that I was uncertain about. And that, that I really think is what we've done. The build is a very, very different build from, of course, the build of 32 years ago, because all the materials available are different. Um, and I think it's just um, also, of course, the colour palette might be a little bit of a shock because, as you were saying, over the years, it's gently faded. And because it's taken 30-something years to gently fade, we've all got used to it. Um, and so it's, that's been lovely to go back into the archives and then re-bring the, the colours back to life. I mean, even from from the little I've seen, that is the the biggest difference I'd say this year. The colour yeah. is is vivid. Yeah, I, I, as someone who's seen the production over thirty years, have you noticed that change, or or has your memory of it sort of slipped as well? Well, of course, my my eyeballs are likely going to be a little different from <laughs> from most other people's on this subject. Um, I think, to be honest with you, I started to notice it after about five years or six years. And um, the red room slowly got less red and the silver mouldings on the red room lost their silver. Um, so, you know, already you were seeing, it was very, very subtle. But what I have said to a lot of people is that about 10 years ago, what I realized seeing a performance was that the danger had gone out of the performance. Now, by that, I mean, the first five years of doing this show, the set changes were absolutely terrifying. Because if you know what could happen if the order in any way got wrong. Um, so they were almost unwatchable and that tension transmits itself to the audience. And that was, and I think then, of course, everybody got, got to know how to do it. And, and that stress went out of it. And I'm, I'm sort of hoping that the new build will bring that back, that excitement back. 
It's only will for me because I'm already very nervous <laughs> about what's ahead towards the end of this week. I'm sure I, we all I, I had no idea you deliberately set out to terrify us. That's good to know. Yeah, well, no, I always do that. You know. <laughs> there's, um, there's darkness hidden within every little snowflake. There is know. indeed. Um, <laughs> Elaine, as, as our head of costume, your team has been charged over the last oh. 30 years of maintaining a production of this scale. Where, where are the challenges within that? Um, I think that... Uh, the thing to point out about Nutcracker as opposed to Swan Lake or Sleeping Beauty or Capalia or any of the other big full length ballets is we do it every year. So it takes a much heavier hit than any of, of, of the bigger ballet, you know, the big ballets. We may do Swan Lake every three years, Don Quixote every three years or whatever. But Nutcracker, you can guarantee we will do every year. Not only will we do it every year, we will do it in solid matinee runs. For a chunk of four weeks. I mean, it's a rather intense um, performance, so it, it it does collapse quicker and um, easier. I mean, I hadn't seen the original um, by the time I started there. The first time I realised, well, I realised immediately walking in that we, it was darned within an inch of its life. But what Can you John, just explain darned for for our audience? It's when the the fabric is rotten. And what they do is you just, you know, like holes in your socks, you reweave it. And um, I walked into, when I first started to, um, I don't know, six people sat there reweaving the fabric for the Arab trousers, the men Arab trousers. And I thought, this is not good waste. This is a bad waste of time and money. You know what I mean? That yeah. actually, we add up the hours we're spending patching this. And there's a kind of block in the system, as it were, but it's it's a with the colour thing, like John said, I didn't really pick that up until I saw the documentary. Well, I, obviously the Bible will show me the colour it should be, but when I watched the documentary on Peter Wright at 95, I saw the whole picture. I saw the set, I saw everything. And I remember sitting there at home thinking, oh dear, what has happened? <laughs> <Do you laughs> know? Uh, that was for me was a moment when I saw the bigger picture because I was looking at, at but it's sort it's been difficult because John and I've been working on it in, in small doses for the last eight years, I think, ever since I yeah. started. That long, really. Yeah, Ooh, and yeah. we've still got yeah. quite some way to go, you know. I mean, costumes tend to be the cost of the of costumes tends to be rather large and um, you know, um the um but it's become like an ecosystem. It's really hard to updates a section at a time because what it does is it throws the others into into a light you don't want to see them in you know um so we're working our way through I mean for this year this year for the first time I think just around the corner from where John sat now Anna sat there making a brand new wing cloak it had to be done this year it's not that the other one isn't usable it's just that we have new winds, we have new snowflakes, and we have a new set, and we have a new goose. We can't, that's going to look like someone's put a rag on. So we have to, that scene will be complete, but there is still work to do. Yeah. I mean, and it is a beautiful production. It's, it's stunning. It's amazing. Stunning. It's an incredible yeah. piece of work. I mean, actually, something to pick up. I'm, I'm six foot four, and I think, you know, in terms of the size of dancers, is that something that has changed over the course of, oh. of your time? And yeah, how, I mean, how have you sort of met those challenges from a well, design point of view and a costume point you of view? You know, I speak to John annually about Nutcracker, don't I, John? At least annually. <laughs> <laughs> and John will come with a list. Now, John's list will be a lot to do with shape and colour. You know, the bustles have dropped. This has happened. That should be green. And it's now sort of mint. Um, um, whereas I will say, look, we have to do, like last year, we had to do the... Um, consorts because the boys could no longer lift their arms in them you know there's only so much you can let them out by and the boys get taller they, they get broader all kinds of stuff happens you know um so we we have different sort of essential things that we have to look at so we have this conversation every year where John's saying not happy with that can we do that and I'm saying I can't actually get those on because they can't they're not big enough anymore <laughs> you know so it's it's a balance between the two really and do you often find the compromise or is there one one that wins over the other 
We always find the compromise, don't we, John? <laughs> yes. And, and, but, the, but the size issue is, is a really important one because, because dancers are doing very, very different workout exercises now to what they were doing, you know, 32 years ago. And the, the women dancers are doing these exercises as well, you know. So their, their rib cages are different. And, but it is true, you look at the winds, of which we've, the wind, not so much the winds, but the consorts for the, that we've replaced, and they look absolutely tiny. And that's why I don't understand, because I remember some quite big guys going into these. It was always, it always seemed there were all the tall guys and the men in the company went into doing the consorts. But you see them, the old ones, and they look absolutely small and tight. You know? Yeah. I mean, upon, I guess, upon redesigning and reimagining how, so for our audience members who've seen the Nutcracker before, what can the audience expect to see that's different in, I guess, from, from a front of house point of view, but from behind the scenes, what is different as well from a design perspective? Um, okay, uh, the front curtain will be, it's, it's very much, the, the things are the same design, but they're going to be sparkier. So the front curtain was always a little bit sketchy and I've made it all since the same design but I've made it um, more punchy to look at. Uh, the red room has proper kind of, it's, it's not a wallpaper, but it's much more the effect of a red wallpaper. The, the red room it definitely is a more opulent red room than the, the Mr. and Mrs. Stahlbaum red room that we've seen. Uh, for example, I kept on my last interview with you, I said, you know, that in the 32 years, Mr. Stalbum has earned quite a bit of money, obviously, and he spent it on good paintings for the walls and some nice gilt frames. And she's really made him spend the dosh. So you, I, th I think that's really nice. You fast forward these 32 years. It's exactly the same. It's a red room. And that everybody will recognize, but it's had a makeover, you know. I was thinking that you follow this family, of course, but that would mean that Clara's now age 40, so you can't really take that to any logical conclusion. Um, snowflakes, um, again, same designs, but that we always had a problem with the snowflake wings because they were soft. They were, you know, soft goods. They flapped around when the dancers ran off the stage the wind as they pass them would make them flop around. And it's been the sole complaint from Sir Peter, quite rightly, every time it comes on, he sighs in despair at the snowflakes. Uh, they have been completely rebuilt and, and they're built as hard goods with the filigree twigs cut out of, of hard sheet. So they're, they're not going to move. They're going to be absolutely clean. And that's a, that's a major change. Um, Kingdom of the Sweets, I've managed to replace the, the wings, which when I said there were things I never liked, that was top of my list. I never liked the wings, the side wings for sweets. Again, they're, they're just a slightly more profiled, opulent, version of what we've seen and the objects that come in are the same but again they've all been rebuilt you know so I I really have tried to keep the production as the loved production from the Birmingham Royal Bally uh, that everybody knows um, but just giving it a new a new life that's all and Elena I guess I'll put the same to you how does how does this I, you're constantly evolving the costumes, but how how does new costumes affect you and your team? And I guess the ability of the costume department to do their job. Um, I think probably, um, let's put it this way, because the costumes are so old, I, we kind of had to have two teams on standby because they're double showing. So the people that were running the show would come home in the evening, but before they left, they would leave 
um, a rail of repairs, you know, um, and um, then another, then the production team will come in at, at um, nine in the morning and start sewing them back together <laughs> because there wasn't the time to set and run the show and the amount of repairs that was needing because fabric, you know, it's rotten. Uh, and we are talking about 30 years use as well. And the snowflakes were absolutely the worst offenders. It was always, there was always, you know, four or five snowflakes waiting to have bits. But I remember when I first started watching um, the hens from the maids, because the maids are always students. So they have, they go up and down, you know, one minute you'll get a tall girl, the next minute be a short girl. And that line had been sewn so often. I remember watching a rehearsal and literally the whole hem fell off. The fabric, <laughs> nothing was holding it there, just at the front, it just fell off. And of course we back it, we stitch it back together, but um, you know, that you can only go so far with it. You know. yeah. But I, I think what, I think in essence, it's gonna save your team a huge amount of time. Well, it always, always jeopardizes whatever the big um, three length for the spring is, you know? because it puts so much pressure on when we can start um, uh, the next one, which is, in this case, Swan Lake. You know, um, we just can't start it while we're too busy patching together Nutcracker because every pair of hands needs to be on board for it. Absolutely. Um, I'm conscious of time. We've got a few questions coming in. Um, for anyone watching, if you do have questions, please put them in the chat and I'm going to do my best to get through a few of them now. Um, the first one's from Terry for John. John, do you still work from drawings and paintings or is the model all important now? Oh, um, no, I still work from drawings and paintings. And of course, for this project, all the, all the, the designs are, are already there. So in this case, I got access to the old model and, and worked mainly from that. But when it's a new production, of course, I draft all the costumes in paint and pencil, and obviously I paint all the backdrops for models. But um, yeah, I mean, you're, I you're primarily an artist as well. So I think I, well, I, would, yes, I would sort I of say, I would sort of say nowadays you're the exception to the rule, which is a shame. You know, and going to, I actually went down to Bay Productions in Cardiff to, to film John and some of the sets being made. And I think, the use of um, CAD's computer animated design on this production is, is incredible. You know, the ability to build sets off of those has changed a lot in 30 years. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think people always say to you, well, don't you design, can't you use a computer to design? And if, certainly for me, no. I know there are designers that do that. I couldn't begin on that. It's a whole different training. And actually I wouldn't want to, but the fantastic thing, is that when I have delivered the model and it then gets drafted in CAD, I have access to the stuff that you were looking at on the computer where the whole model is drafted 3D and you can turn it around. And, and of course, for stuff like adjusting moldings and adjusting ground plans, it's a, it's a, a different world. I mean, I remember when we did Nutcracker, um, the, the, the the drawing of the fly, you know, the, the grid of where everything was, took about a week of somebody's time on a drafting board with a pen. And I remember seeing a mistake in it where something was on the wrong fly bar. And I just didn't dare say anything because I thought this plan will be another week of having to be redrawn. And it's something I'm sure we can adjust on stage. And now, of course, if you see that on a plan, you just click, 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 and adjust it on the computer, pull out a new plan. So it's, it's yes, it's a complete new world, but I still design in the same way to start. Yeah, that's great. Um, Elaine, this question's from Kerry. How many people work within each of the team's costumes and the set design, and what training and background is required? I only know about the costume side of things. Um, we have, I have a total team of about 10, which covers footwear production and running. And then we bring in extra people as and when we need them. You know, like for instance, for Nutcracker, we use 10 dresses downstairs and things like that. And um, it's act one where all the work takes place for us. You know, that's where the changes go. I mean, act two, there are no quick changes. Or shouldn't yeah, be. I mean, I'm, I, whenever I take people backstage, I try and, I try and explain 
the organized chaos that is act one behind the scenes <laughs> hard. it's hard to convey people often don't believe me um we've got a question from jackie p are the party tricks going to be the same is nutcracker doll the same uh, i'm glad to say yes to all of those but we're still not going to tell you how we do them um <laughs> From Brendan, I believe the Australian Ballet has the rights to your production. Will their production be recreated? So, John, correct me if I'm wrong. This was a completely separate build to the one we do. So it's it sits and lives in Australia. Oh yes, no, no. I, I went to Australia and we rebuilt it completely yeah. for them. They they have their own nutcracker. They can't pro they can only perform it in Melbourne though because it doesn't fit the Sydney Opera House, and they do the Green Murphy one in the Sydney Opera House and our one in, in Melbourne. Well, Melbourne's gain is Sydney's loss. Um, has, has Sir Peter seen it yet? This question's from Hillary. If so, did he approve? I'm not sure what he's seen yet, actually. Well, no, no, he thought that it's it's all that sort of time warp that we had in 2020. Uh, Peter, uh, we, we, yes, I did a model showing for Peter and the company in December 2019. So that's when he when he saw the whole... The whole model with you know the whole thing in every detail and he seemed very happy he I mean, the fantastic thing is you know and he sits in front of it and you suddenly get quite scared about what he's going to say you know because he he really looks at it and you think oh my god what have i done wrong <laughs> and in fact he looked at the snowflakes and he wasn't happy with the headers you know the the headers and the snowflakes and it was something I was, I was still in my head too, but I, I thought, oh, I can't do them again. And he went straight for it and said, I'm not happy with the headers. So I took the form and I, re, I rebuilt it. And he's very happy, he's happy now, but he hasn't seen, he hasn't seen the finished thing on stage. He's coming to see that on Thursday. Yeah, I think something that's actually clear from me talking to Peter and to you is your relationship is very open. And actually, yeah, it's, oh no, it's fantastic. It's, like, it's clear that you two have a very shared vision of how it should look. Yeah, I know. He's, that, he's that wonderful, he's still utterly wonderful to work with. He yeah. is, yeah. Um, question from Fran Lane is probably the last one we've got time for. But Fran Lane, what has happened to the old sets and costumes? Have they been archived or scrapped or sold off for fundraising? Um, they're Ooh. still with us, quite a few of them. Um, I'm using a few of the old ones, set aside the new ones for a uh, a big give um th th just so you can see the difference um we actually i know it sounds a bit silly but i we stripped the stones off them because some things have improved over the years and some things haven't which is our ability to get hold of those beautiful um faceted drops and things like that so um, for instance the snowflake headdresses are corroded from years of sweat and hairspray so the wires that held, I mean, they were just corroded, rotten, rusty. And um, when they were replaced, um, we took every usable drop off. I actually sat one evening last week and unpicked every single pearl from um, um, a columbine. I enjoyed it. It was, <laughs> it was like therapy for me. I guess it was quite therapeutic. It was very therapeutic. I didn't have to write a report. I didn't have to do any all the other things I have to do. I just sat there with a glass of red wine watching Midsummer Murders, unpicking pearl after pearl after pearl. <laughs> and the shocking beautiful. thing to me about that, and how I did go in and say to Jojo, who's looked after the costumes, that there wasn't one missing. I mean, you kind of wouldn't notice if one was missing, but there wasn't a single one missing from every dissection on that skirt and the bodice. Everyone had been checked. I was like, good grief. You know, the fabric behind it was rotten, but every pearl was there. So we reuse whenever we can. We've taken buttons off the old Harlequin. We've taken the cadet buttons we reused, didn't we, John, and things like that. You know, so we do try and recycle where possible. Yeah, no, I think that's yeah, that's brilliant to hear. John, there's one last thing. What are the what are the costumes behind you for our audience? <laughs> oh, well. these, these are the these are the new snowflakes. Elaine uh, can't wipe the smile off her face. They just, so just, they just got <laughs> delivered today. Wow. <laughs> now this is the first. This is a, well. This is only the first consignment. It is. Yes. Okay. Um, they, they they are. I must say they're absolutely exquisite. 
They really oh, are. They look so beautiful. I mean, I don't know how they look on the screen, but I'm sitting just so close to them and the quality of costume construction from Jane Gill and Suzanne Parkinson and their workshops is beyond wonderful, really. They look incredible. Um, that is about all we have time for. If oh. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who's come. Um, Nutcracker starts on Saturday and runs till the 10th of December. Um, and we look forward to welcoming you. If you haven't already, please get a ticket. And uh, yes, thank you to John. Thank you to Elaine. And uh, thank you for all your time. We hope to see you at a Nutcracker very soon. See you tomorrow, John. <laughs> see you tomorrow, Elaine. <laughs>